So if you've followed Stringjoy or this channel for very long, you've probably heard more than a few things about wound thirds. Wound thirds are actually one of the reasons why I started Stringjoy in the first place. If you haven't heard the whole story, the really short version, uh, is I got really into playing wound thirds, but I couldn't find them unless I played a set of like 12 to 52s or whatever, um, which wasn't what I was trying to do. So I ended up kind of customizing sets or buying sets so that I could grab like a 20 or a 22 wound or whatever um, and have a really flexible wound third because I liked more of the tone of wound thirds, um, but really wanted to get the flexibility of more of a plain third. Uh, anyway, all that aside, I love wound thirds. I talk about them a lot. Uh, a lot of our videos that talk about why they're good uh, have done pretty well. But it occurred to me that throughout all this time, we actually haven't done like a sound comparison uh, of what a wound third sounds like versus a plain third. Now I know the individual string makes a difference. You can definitely hear the difference between a wound string and a plain string. Um, what we're more looking to do today is kind of play it in context really quickly uh, and see what the different sounds are. I, I think that the difference will be subtle. I'm actually really interested to hear what you guys think, whether you can tell the difference tonally between a wound third and a plain third um, in context, recorded through an amp, and then, you know, uploaded onto YouTube where we have all sorts of compression and EQ happening. Uh, it's always interesting to hear what sort of effects, like sort of central tonal things have once you process everything. So today, we're going to find out. So we're doing this all on my Gibson Les Paul. Uh, we're going to start off with a plain third. This is a standard 10 to 48 set, so that plain third is a 17 uh, on here. Um, going just straight clean into this bad cat. We'll play with a little bit of dirt, a little bit of clean, um, and kind of compare the general sounds, all right? All right, so I went ahead and switched us over to a wound third. Just changed that one string, everything else is fresh. Um, probably the easiest string change I've ever really done when it's just one string. Uh, just like before, I'm gonna go kind of back and forth between dirty and clean. Uh, I didn't mention earlier, but I'm using a small sound, big sound mini overdrive pedal uh, into this Bad Cat amp. Um, generally, if I'm using overdrive, it's almost always coming from a small sound mini. Um, it's just a great pedal. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing as before and see if you can tell any difference tonally uh, at home between the plain third from before and this wound third. So first impressions, I always think there's a little bit more of a, a feeling of playing the actual wound string um, than necessarily the huge tonal impact. I usually find it warms things up a little bit. Um, here sitting in the room, uh, I hear a little bit more warmth. I actually get kind of an interesting brightness up there, um, but it's not quite the same as that really sort of ice picky sound that most plain G strings tend to have. Um, that said, I'm gonna go listen to the tracks. I'm actually really curious how much of this comes through uh, through the mic. As with a lot of guitar things, there's things that in the room you notice a big difference on that once you mic it and compress it and all that, uh, it doesn't sound quite the same. So I'm excited to take a look and then, you know, see what we think. So this is a really interesting one. Uh, listening to the tracks here in the studio through the monitors, um, there is a difference. I can hear it especially in like the beginning uh, of that thing I was playing. I tried to do something that was pretty like G heavy. 
Um, and you can definitely hear a tonal difference. There's a little bit more sparkle uh, with the plain string that I, I like, actually. I, I'm a big fan of wound thirds, but I think I might even choose that if I was picking which was better here. Um, more of a slightly muted sensibility uh, with the wound string um, in, in the second take. Once you kick on the dirt uh, or start strumming, the differences become a lot more subtle, honestly. Like, I don't, I don't know if I could a pick out uh, in a blind test uh, which one was which, personally. So it's hard to draw one sort of crystal clear takeaway here. On one side, there definitely is a difference. Uh, I can definitely hear it, especially when you're soloing out just that string or playing a part that's really heavy on the G. Um, and there's always something to be said for those differences that you feel as a player and that you feel on the amp and that kind of affect how you play. Um, that said, on the other side, you know, once you're kicking in dirt or strumming, uh, the differences are really subtle. I, I think as with everything, it comes down a little bit more to what feels more natural to you. I think you could be a great player with a plain third and a great player with a wound third, just depending on, on what your preferences are. Um, but at the end of the day, once you compress it down, and I'm sure once you put it on YouTube, um, the differences, of course, become subtle. You know. So as always, if you want to try out a wound third, or you never want to, uh, we're here for you at Stringjoy. You can turn any of our sets into a set with a wound third through our custom set option. You can do it for absolutely free. Uh, and the one tip that I wanted to leave you guys with is, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're looking to replace a plain string with a wound string, go slightly up in gauge. So if you're looking to replace, say, a 17 with a wound string, go with an 18 or a 20. Um, this just accounts for some differences in how the strings actually feel and how the core wire affects the tone. Uh, but if you want a simple rule of thumb, that's it. So as always, go on, explore, uh, find what works great for you.